it's another beautiful day and we are always grateful to come your way with the latest in your world of entertainment my name is doreen avia it's a fresh week it's a fresh start in everything we are going to do today and trust me it's all always about the exclusives my name is doreen avio do stay with me if you just joined me, this is Let's Talk Entertainment. And of course, the president of Ghana, Nanado Dankwe Kufuado, has promised to build ultra-modern theaters in the capitals of the Ashanti, the northern and, of course, the western regions. And he says this is part of government's commitment to help boost the creative arts industry. We are committed to building multi-purpose theaters in Takrade, Kumasi, and Tamale. It is sad It is sad that it has taken this long, but we shall make good this serious omission in artistic and cultural infrastructure. He was speaking at the 10th anniversary of Ghana International School's annual drama night. The president bemoaned the seeming neglect of the book industry in the country. He also expressed worry that most books on Ghana's history and culture were published overseas rather than in the country. He has, however, pledged government's commitment to support local authorship. My government has put in, plan, in place plans to promote the literary arts by encouraging our writers and publishers to produce books that portray our rich culture. Today, the most beautiful books of Ghana's culture are predominantly written by foreigners or published abroad. We intend to support the book industry and promote local authorship. The music industry is going to be given a boost to meet its potential. Music, as we all know, plays an important part in our lives in Ghana. It is personal, it is national. I love music, especially highlight. <laughs> And at every chance, I listen and dance to Amachi Dede, Daddy Lumba, Kwabna Kwabna, amongst many others. Music has made Ghana famous. The contribution of Ghanaian music producers to the industry also deserves commendation. In the 1950s, E.T. Mensah, King of Highlight, put Ghana on the world musical lap. In the 1990s, Reggie Rockstar did his bit by creating hip hop, a fusion of high life and hip hop. Ghana has an abundance of talent that can be nurtured to compete on the world scale. The music industry is going to be given a boost to meet its potential. Moving on, Stone Boy is also in the news. You know, he was in Norway to perform at Ghana at 60, and right from there, he had to dash down to Jamaica to, you know, do one or two things. We hear he's recording with some top Jamaican acts, but, you know, he was recently on one of the uh, top television stations that's um, on stage, and, well, Stone Boy says he runs dancehall music here in Ghana. All right, so what is your business in Jamaica, though? Um... Last week was Ghana independence, you know. Mm -hmm. Ghana um, was 60 years after independence. Um, so we had an event down in uh, down, uh, Norway. So I flew all, all the way to Norway with my team, you know, go represent Ghana and perform for the, you know, the masses. And surprisingly, you see all, all type of other Africans and even white people fill up the place more than 50 half of, of, of my own people. So, okay. So that means, that just shows you how the music you know, the reggae, the dance of music, and Afrobeat has gone so far. So after that ends there, I decided to come to Jamaica. Because mm -hmm. now I was closer. Like, every time I plan it, I don't really make it. I'm like, all right, no, I'm closer. So let me just jump in, come check the vibes, you know, make some proper links. Like, I have a whole heap of links that I've never met in person. Mm -hmm. So this is also the time to reach them and, you know, mm -hmm. meet them like Woodrow, like Amso's, like 
like like Stampy, like you know, mm -hmm. all of them, you know. Okay, so so talk about your music now in Ghana. Where are you now in the scheme of, of Ghanaian music? Um, where, where, where Ghana music is at a point, especially for me, at a, I'm, at, I'm at a certain heights that um, everybody's looking up to. Yes. Everybody's looking up to from from people who from predecessors, you know, and even my own young fellow artists, because the reggae, the dancehall, and the Afrobeat, mm -hmm. that's lots of melodies, you know, so yeah. at this point now, everybody is gravitating to that energy right now, that's why I am, so I put in a lot of work, because I know that people are watching, a lot of people getting inspired. And so you're in the top tier? Definitely, number one. Number one, as it relates to dancehall? Yes. And reggae, yeah, Afrobeat it, it, too? Yeah, or would there be a bigger... Afro, pure Afrobeat pure Afro artists. artists. Uh, in Ghana, no. In Ghana, no. Like, as we, the Afrobeat sound now in West Africa is a Ghana sound, regardless. Okay. So that's like the foundation already. The typical Afrobeat now is even finding it difficult. Mm -hmm. Down in a Ghana, no. Oh. Mean that. So you mean dancehall yeah. and reggae are run around that? Dance, so the Afro dancehall and reggae. You mean that's the like Afro, that one? The mix that, of the the all mix three. Of, the mix of all three. Uh, the hybrid of the all three. The hybrid of three are running. Oh, and that's, why that's what's worth. Me run it still. You know. And are you around that? Yeah. All right. Pop. Let me hold you tight. Yeah, me cool, I'm a light. Gonna love you better. My touch make you feel a little light. I know feel man a real. Pull your nose high when we're you know my 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 ethnic my dialect. Your dialect. Yeah. Oh cool. Eyes on you would say I'm cool and cool. You can't try that. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Say it again. Mku, 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 Mku. Yeah, Mku Lenu, Mku Lenu. Yeah, so I'm Mku Lenu. Yeah, eyes on you. Yeah. Wow, those girls, you know, those Make girls it. could get my eyes anytime. For real? <laughs> those girls, uh, they're from, they're Ghanaian? Um, Ghanaian? Some of, them, or... some of them Ghana, some of them Jamaican still, because we shot the video in London. In London? So I can okay. make out two of them say them come from Jamaica. And so so it's, it's, again, a hybrid. Hybrid, <laughs> everything, everything. Group of hybrid. ladies, a mix of ladies. For real. And the, the song is, is all, the, all your music is in, in there, all of your... Your genres are mixed in this, right? The, the genres that you draw. Right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. The Afro, yeah. the, the dance Afro beat, the high life, the dance hall, Same. the pigeon, patois, English. You know? Everything. It's just a. Uh, and this was done in London. So, so, so where's this record now? Where's uh, this? Track? This record is, is is number seven now on the top ten African chart MTV base. Mm -hmm. That is the whole of Africa. Yes. But in Ghana, it's number one now. A, a burn up you Ga see it. Ghana yeah. right Mad now. thing. Mad, mad, mad. Mad song. Okay, so, all right. So let's talk a little bit more now on, on what's burning up Ghana. We know that there's the presence of reggae, roots, mm -hmm. one drop reggae. One drop, yeah. And then, of course, the dance hall. And if you're the top man, you're the top man. Mm. There, that means that dance hall is, is ahead of reggae, roots reggae, would yeah. you say? Dance hall is definitely ahead of roots reggae. Personally, as an artist, and I'm not the only artist in Ghana, definitely. And other people pick up different form of inspirations. Mm -hmm. So, so we have artists where where we are moving at that line there, yeah. just to get the hype and get the the thing going. Yeah. And trying to live off of the, the that type of dance hall where it's violent and them feel like at them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And there's other type too. Like I think that uh, I would see myself as one who doesn't promote none of them things. So you're so not I into violence. I don't, I don't get your no music. Push, but my thing is 100 percent legit and correct, you know. From and you're running the place with that. Trust me, you know, from presidential wow. status to the one in the market to the truck push of them. They read my thing that. They well, like that's that, that's know. that's commendable, and maybe some of our youths in Jamaica ought to listen yeah, to exactly. that. Exactly. Because you're running the place in Ghana, and and you're talking about millions of people onto your music Definitely. in just Ghana alone. Exactly. Not to to mention the wider. West Africa and Africa and, exactly. and, and Europe. Because you're big in Europe, spend a lot of Definitely. time in Europe, don't you? Definitely. It's the mid 50s, and Chuck Berry was at the height of his success, pioneering a new sound, rock and roll. He had his own driving guitar style, fusing country western with rhythm and blues. Go, 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 little. With his 
Gibson guitar and energetic moves, he pushed down racial barriers, playing to a mostly white teenage audience. Go, go, be good. Barry's hits, including Johnny Be Good and Sweet Little Sixteen, didn't just thrill teenagers. They influenced rock's biggest acts. John Lennon once said, if you tried to give rock and roll another name, you might call it Chuck Berry. Barry grew up in St. Louis and was shaking things up even as a kid. During his first public performance at his high school, he played the blues, considered inappropriate for the time. But even as a teen, Barry would also begin his lifelong trouble with the law, serving three years for armed robbery. Barry married and worked a series of jobs to support his family. Then a road trip to Chicago to see his idol Muddy Waters proved to be his big break. Record executives heard Barry turn an old country and western number called Ida Red into the hit Maybelline. One Maybelline, why can't you be true? The birth of rock and roll. Disc jockey Alan Freed began touting Barry's new sound. Alan Freed called it the beat. You gotta have the beat. Then came more chart toppers, rollover Beethoven, and rock and roll music and more trouble with the law. Federal authorities prosecuted Barry for transporting an underage girl across state lines. He served a year and a half in prison. Barry returned to recording and kept on touring, showing off his famous duck walk, boosted in popularity by the Beatles, Rolling Stones, and Beach Boys, who were now singing his songs. For another artist to choose uh, one's uh, material really is gratifying. In 1979, he performed for President Jimmy Carter at the White House and even launched his music on the Voyager 1 satellite. Then, more prison time for tax evasion. In 1984, Barry took home the Lifetime Achievement Grammy. Two years later, Keith Richards threw him a big 60th birthday bash. Going round and round. He was one of the first inductees into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And in 1995, Barry fired up the stage with Bruce Springsteen to celebrate rock history. Dubbed the eternal teenager, Barry continued touring well into his 80s, never letting go of that rock and roll music he helped define. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News. All right, so you heard it all. You can only get it right on Let's Talk Entertainment. My name is Doreen Avio, and if you miss out on all our trending entertainment stories, you can always go back to myjoeonline.com, the entertainment page, get all the stories, and of course, you can also interact with me on Twitter at Doreen Avio, and on Instagram is Doreen underscore Avio, and of course, big up to the team, Ike and Becky for production. Do have a lovely evening. Mm -hmm.